Hello, hi. Welcome to episode number two of this podcast. In this podcast, we will be talking about some really good poetry. Of course, poetry. So yeah, poetry is uh, something that always just inspires me a lot. And um, uh, when I when it comes to reading poetry, I prefer someone who actually talk about real facts, as I told you before. So yeah, uh, one of the greatest poets that I will be discussing and I will be reading today is Charles Bukowski. Charles Bukowski was one of the greatest writers of his times. Um, his work is an evidence of his, you know, of his um, hard work and his passion about writing. And uh, despite of all his uh, rejections, that writer he actually used to write every single day, every single fucking day. Wow! I wish I could ever, I wish I could ever just write like that, you know, every single day. But I, I, it just, it just doesn't doesn't happen for me. It has to be something, you know, a trigger, uh, a thought, you know, a pain. There has to be some pain, you know, uh, always existing, a pain of the past or anything like that, of the present of the people, or in betrayal, or anything like that. So it has to be something like that. So, I'm just going to start, I'm not just going to get into his biography or anything like that because focuses on his work and his work, by his work, I'm just going to start with uh, something by, as I told you earlier that uh, writing can never be imposed, you know, you can never just write for someone or people on money, for money's sake, you can, you, you cannot do that. If you're a writer, you just know it because if it doesn't come outside you, if it doesn't, roar from you as charles because he says it is not there you are not there you're not a writer so yeah it has to come out of you like a rocket so yeah i'm just gonna start reading uh, one of his uh, work that says so you want to be a writer question mark so this basically this this writing basically talks about if you're a writer you cannot just impose your writings on yourself you know you cannot just Take it as a career if you want to, you know, because it has to come out out of you itself. So, okay, so that's how it goes. If it doesn't come bursting out of you, in spite of everything, don't do it. Unless it comes and asked out of your heart, and your mind, and your mouth, and your gut, don't do it. If you have to sit for hours staring at your computer screen or hunched over your typewriter, searching for words, don't do it. If you're doing it for money or fame, don't do it. If you're doing it because you want women in your bed, don't do it. If you have to sit there and rewrite it again and again, don't do it. If it's hard work just just thinking about it, don't do it. If you're trying to write like somebody else, forget about it. If you have to wait for it to roar out of you, then wait patiently. If it does, if it never does roar out of you, do something else. If you first have to read it to your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your parents or to anybody else at all, you're not ready. Don't be like so many writers. Don't be like so many thousands of people who call themselves writers. Don't be dull and boring and pretentious. Don't be consumed with self-love. The libraries of the world have yawned themselves to sleep over your kind. Don't add to that. Don't add to that. Don't do it. Unless it comes out of your soul like a rocket. Unless being still would drive you to madness or suicide or murder. Don't do it. Unless the sun inside you is burning your gut. Don't do it. When it, when it is truly time and you have been chosen, it will do it by itself and it will keep on doing it until you die or it dies in you. There is no other way and there never was. Wow. So this was uh, something that truth has been spoken. So yeah, this is how it's, it is. Like you cannot, you can never just, you know, write for, oops, you can just never write for, you know, somebody else and, um, make it like your own or just do it like for for the sake of money shot you know for earning or for instagram 
poetry that you want you have to post every day because otherwise you won't get any other engagements you know you have to get engaged you have to engage people uh, at any cost so you have to make your post thousand plus and flash it etc for the followers or for likes or etc so that is not something that is not writing writing doesn't have to look for followers you write it for yourself i think mainly every writer writes for him or herself and it does involve everything that uh, that ha they have been through or they they might be go going through or that might that might be a fictional thought uh, that they might have in their head so yeah it could be that but i think that every writing involves involves uh, something that you can relate to that a writer can relate to so i think that i write like that you know every writing of mine i'm not saying i'm a great writer i'm not saying i'm not i'm not even a writer i'm just some ordinary person writing whatever goes in my head so yeah it just whatever i write it just involves uh whatever i am facing in the current situation current situation or whatever i have been through whatever so it's just basically it's mainly based on that so yeah that was uh his work uh that was one of his writing that i wanted to take uh initiative with in this podcast because again writing is something that something that need, needed to be preached was this that writing can never be imposed so yeah um i beg your pardon for for something that i have a very sore throat so it it is gonna be my voice i know it's gonna suck i i know that this is the only thing that i do on youtube that uh podcast thingy that involves the voice a good voice so but i have a very sore throat so it's just gonna be this way all the way long so yeah, I just wanted to warn you beforehand. All right. So yeah, we will we will be merely talking about the emphasis uh, of this podcast is on one of his greatest one of the greatest work of Charles Bukowski, that is Bluebird by Charles Bukowski. And um, I based my podcast uh solely solely on uh this poet this piece of writing because I was very much inspired by this writing and uh this kind of hit me on another on another level because um after reading this i realized that somebody else think this way too you know it is recognizable it is understandable you know uh so i never thought it through that oh uh, everybody feel can everybody else can feel this way too so uh before discussing it even more i just no, I don't want to give you another hand of this writing. I just straight away. I just wanted to get into it. I just want to get into it. So it's it's the bluebird. It says the title is bluebird, and it goes like I just want to read it like the way it should be read, you know, without any glitch or something like that or clutches or whatever. Okay. There is a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out. But I'm too tough for him. I say, stay in there. I'm not going to let anybody see you. There's a bluebird in my heart that wants to get out. But I pour whiskey on him and inhale cigarette smoke. And the hose and the bartenders and the crossy clerks never know that he's in there. There's a bluebird in my heart. He wants to get out, but I'm too tough for him. I say, stay down. Do you want to mess me up? You want to screw up the works? You want to blow my book sales in Europe? There is a blue bird in my heart that wants to get out. But I'm too clever. I only let him out at night, at night sometimes. And everybody's asleep. I say, I know that you're there, so don't be sad. Then I put him back, but he's singing a little in there. I haven't quite let him die, and we sleep together like that, with our secret back, and it's nice enough to make a man weep, but I don't weep. Do you? I am speechless.
this was something. And every time I read this piece of writing, it just gives me goosebumps. You know, it's just that it is so true that it's just it's about the bluebird that lives in each of us. Um, mainly because uh, we do not really recognize it. We are not able to see it because it's not something uh, very visual. You cannot really visualize it. It's something that lives in there and that talks and speaks to you and uh, you mostly just disregard it and most of the times you disregard it so it's always in there and uh, I'm just so glad that you people who might be listening to me might be able to connect with me in a way that they might fault they might have faulted it too so it's just so good it's just great you know it's a very profound piece of writing so moving on to something else, uh, a little, I won't say it's a surprise, but it's something that I was so much inspired by, this, as I told you earlier, that I was so much inspired by this piece of writing that uh, the concept, you know, I, I knew that it was in there, it was somewhere in there. So I was never able to uh, determine it. So after reading this, after listening to this piece of writing, I you can also just go on re and listen to this bluebird on YouTube. It's uh, the voiceover is available. Um, so yeah, um, I was so much inspired by this piece of writing that the concept, you know, it just kind of just, you know, uh, made me just write like this again. But I cannot, in no way I can, there is no comparison. You know, I'm not comparing. I'm not comparing at all. There is no comparison. No way I'm comparing my piece of writing to his. Because again, what he wrote is very profound and I'm not even slightly close to him. So it's just the concept that I tried to uh, mold into in my own way, in my own, in my own words. So I just thought that I should uh, do that. And I did it. I tried it twice and I tried it twice, like in a way that I wrote it. I wrote the concept uh, twice. Yeah. So yeah, it's just that uh, one piece of writing is, uh, uh, it's not poetry. It's not poetry, by the way. It's just a piece of writing, you know, because I used to, I also I also tend to write like a short story kind of stuff. So it's not poetry, but it's a piece of writing. That uh, concept that is that, uh, that is similar to the Bluebird by Charles Bruce. So yeah, that's how it goes. I thought of you. I thought of giving you a read, but you ain't much of a poetry. You're just a prologue of a book named Bluebird. The bluebird that you killed on behalf of her. Suddenly it occurred to me. What if the bluebird wasn't blue enough to be killed or threatened? It wasn't that naked to be seen. It might be living or just hiding beneath the yellow bed of roses. It knows places to survive. Oh, my water broke. There you are. It's not that story. It can't be a fetus. Bluebird lives in you. It glorifies you. Saddens you. Heals you. But above all, it is birthed by you. It can be killed by you. On behalf of anyone. Of all the facts, you ain't, you ain't poetry still. Just a bird. Blue or red. Lost in its voyage. All right. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, one piece of writing. That was I actually wrote on this inspired by Charles Bukowski because yeah, it was mainly inspired by Charles Bukowski. That's why you you could have you might have witnessed the word bluebird in the very writing. So yeah, uh, it was uh, mainly the idea was that uh, again that bluebird is not something. Uh, it's not any any person, you know, a physical existence. Bluebird doesn't have any physical physical existence. It's just a fictionary character character that uh that lives in you, uh, lives within you, and uh, it just talks with, talks to you all the time. But uh, you mostly disregard and neglect whatever he or she says. So it's just that that bluebird is. It's not again a fetus story. It's not a something a human inside you. It's just that it lives in you and happens to clarify you. It tends to sadden you, makes you happy, or make because again it is it is again it is birthed by you and can be killed by you. So it's just that 
goober they is mainly based upon you if you let it survive it will survive if you let it free it will be free if you let it sing it will sing so just let it be there let the just free your bluebird okay so that's what i want to say that free your bluebird free yourself free your mind so that's something that was um not even close to what he wrote but that was something that was a concept that i imitated from charles bogoski writing to bird piece of writing the bird so yeah that was a uh, one uh one way of writing a bluebird but uh there's another something that i also posted and did a re read over that over this piece of writing uh on my instagram and um that's another way of uh, me expressing bluebird and uh what is bluebird and uh the title was like what are you so yeah i haven't just titled titled is uh, it as a uh, bluebird but yeah the concept is again inspired by this writing what are you that's the title by the way yeah that's how it goes the bluebird is you or me or just a captured creature it wanders at my vaulted sprouts or the one that told me not to stop even if writing about him hurts i often create poems in the setting sun explore my truths in the midnight sometimes that's a time when i free the blue bird that lives in me most of the times just suffocating covered in smoke sometimes at night i hear the whispers where it longs to be heard to be freely curling in the wind to be not fearful of water but it stays there hidden and wrestled talks to me until prayers sometimes acts strange and the music grinds its soul or when it rains i try dissecting it i try dissecting to let it be free but it stays in the constant notion where it traces their scars on the outer lining of the wing often dances around without any tune and just stays quiet this blue bird in my heart seeps from my bones to my skin but it never escapes killing it would be catastrophic holding it would be infernal instead we have just settled for each other comforted ourselves in each other's pain so yeah that was uh that was that was it um uh that was inspired mainly by Charles Bukowski Bluebird and again I'm just why why I keep on saying that I don't I do not understand because I just wanted to reassure again and again that I'm not comparing myself with him. yeah there is no way I can compare myself with him but the concept is important in this I I just in this piece of writing you know it's just me talking to myself again as always so it's just basically the notion that goes in my head and just the the muse that i am i keep on falling into uh, while writing you know when i'm just uh, writing i just feel this way you know i feel like releasing that bluebird you know so yeah that that's how it says i often create poems in the setting sun that's that's true that's very true that's because i do that i explore my truths in the midnight sometimes i guess that's very true because you know that's when i release my thoughts and i let them be free so yeah they just evolve from my head and just go they're free they're free i just let myself free and then at, at night most of the times i guess every time uh so yeah that's a time when i free the blue bird that lives in me most of the time it's just suffocating covered in smoke so yeah this blue bird that i keep that i keep tied you know that i that i've always you know wrestled and you know tied with chains you know, within me and it's always just sort of suffocating when it's in, when it's in crowd in the crowd and when it's in, it with it's present within the people you know within the gatherings it's just mostly suffocating and i'm not letting it be free so it's just mostly suffocating covered in smoke smoke could be anything it could be cigarette smoke it could be 
smoke like you know blurry images so it could be anything just how you perceive a certain piece of writing so yeah sometimes at night i hear the whispers but it longs to be heard so yeah that's when that's at the, at the time at the night time when i'm just writing uh that's when i hear that blue bird and i hear the voice of that blue bird and just tend to just write about him and whatever it feels you know so yeah uh until and how true is that because i just took the concept from uh, uh the blue bird by charles bakuski but it mostly talks about how i write you know it just mostly talks about like when i say that it's freely curling in the wind and be not fearful of water so yeah that, that totally tells about me like i am i have a very i'm very much phobic of water you know water scares me ocean scares me a lot <laughs> so yeah that's one phobia i have so yeah that's 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 why i i'm very much you know a freely living person you know always looking for freedom so uh, yeah i that's one one thing that i really um appreciate so yeah i just i really appreciate freedom and um that's why that's the one reason why that this writing is based upon the concept that when i when i said that to be freely curling in the wind and to be not fearful of water so that's what i meant like just be free and just don't be scared of water it's just that so that's the concept so yeah it just stays in there hidden and wrestles and talks to me until prayers i write until prayers that's what's, what the fuss is about and um sometimes act strange when the music runs its all or when it rains so yeah um i tend to dislike rain sometimes <laughs> that's a lot of me okay so yeah that's a lot of uh, me in the podcast i was mainly the focus was on the concept so concept was that um that uh charles bukowski bluebird is something very fascinating that fascinated me a lot and it's a very profound piece of writing and it holds a lot a lot of depth if you just feel it you know feel the feel feel the writer feel the how he what he might be thinking while writing something so yeah if you just do that i think that you will be you will be able to understand a lot of things you know because every writer writes anything you know it, it's it's always based upon some concept you know some some there's always some theory that is that is in his head that on uh, basing on that theory he writes so yeah so it could be theory it could be bullshit theory you know you know it could be a bullshit theory as well so it's just that how you perceive you know and how you relate it to your life and how you are able to understand well certain things you know so it's it's mostly that by talking by talking about certain writers you know um i would say that um uh writer charles vikowski his his uh, some of his uh, work is uh his famous quotes that uh, you might be able to find you can even look for them um charles vikowski famous quotes and famous words you know out of that came out of his books so that's something um one of his greatest work and uh, one thing that i I have actually collected some of his quotes that I found very much relatable and uh you know that could be incorporated in this podcast. So first goes like um and an intellectual says a simple thing in a hard way. An artist says a hard thing in a simple way. Wow, that's so fucking true. So yeah, because I think that I have so far even though i write i have read very much you know a lot of intellectual things and i it was so hard to understand them perceive them you know it's it is hard you know because if if you're a, if you're a person who doesn't read at all it's it's hard it it's very hard for you to understand those words you know those difficult words you know, sometimes you do not need heavy vocabulary that's something that i have um i used to do it you know i used to use a lot of heavy vocabulary and um uh something that is less less perceivable so i used to do that and but i think that writing is not that writing is not writing difficult words you know and uh, taking a leap through a very difficult piece of writing and you know because again that becomes so much less understandable 
uh, by people if you have uh, if you have uh, an audience of people if you have an audience uh, who are who barely have a good vocabulary who who have barely have um who know those words so you cannot just talk deep and you cannot just talk if you cannot just talk deep shit and you can just involve a lot of happy vocabulary it just crowds everything and it's just so hard to understand so you don't have to use happy vocabulary while writing just need to be simple and you know simple writing is always appreciable so write simple and write clear and be more you can be sophisticated in your writing you can be but uh you know being being more clear to your readers it's the foremost thing and that's one good thing about Charles Bukowski because his work is you know it's understandable to every other person out there so yeah that was a uh, that was something that into an, an intellectual says a simple thing in a hard way and an artist says a hard thing in a simple way so that was a very good quote by not a quote that was that might have taken from that might have had taken from some some of his book one of his book something like that all right so find another quote says find what you love and let it kill you that's uh, i think that we should we should always be fetching for you know uh going on for something do something that we love we do not just we can't we, sh we shouldn't we shouldn't we shouldn't be just you know running after the career that uh that we never wanted to do that includes me you know i just i just feel like uh even though i'm just doing this particular degree i'm attaining this particular degree um i'm not bound to that degree i do not even though i am bound to certain you know rules of society and have to, i have to move in the society and i have to be an independent woman and do all those things but i think that um besides doing all of those things i just have to do something that i love and i think writing is something that i love art is something that inspires me a lot and i do that for for my sake for no money's sake so yeah that's something that that's why i do not impose it ever so yeah find what you love and let it kill you so do something that you want to do and do it like that's something you're passionate you know if you're passionate about something you should always do it you should always go for it so yeah i just don't need to be dull and boring yeah you can bore it i'm a fucking boring person i'm a very boring person you can never ever enjoy my company i suck at that you know i'm not a good entertainer at all okay so another quote that says that uh poetry is what happens when nothing else can that's very true i think that only writers can relate to that uh because um i think readers that is relatable to readers as well because if you are in pain if you are hurt that that's why you listen to music you know poetry is music but music involves poetry of course so yeah if you if you are hurt if you're in pain if you had a heartbreak you know you always learn for good music you know that has relatable lyrics you know good poetry so i think that poetry is what happens when nothing else can so yeah if you are if you're a writer i think that Poetry is something that helps you get or some bullshitty past or something like that, or some person who has kind of teared you up, tore you up. So yeah, sorry for my bad, bad, bad English. I'm just, I'm just, um, you know, a human. So yeah, that's all right. Um, so um, another, so yeah, poetry is what happens when nothing else can. That's obviously relatable to every other person out there, if you're writer or not despite of all those boundaries okay so another quote that says that the free soul is rare but you know it when you see it basically because you feel good very good when you're near or with them <laughs> that gives me a moment of silence because um <laughs> i guess that um that uh if if you are a free soul you are just free and you are just so you are just you do not worry about things you don't worry about you do not worry about life you know about people about certain things not happening in a certain way that you the way you want them to and you're just free and you're you are just it's just so 
it's a very very good good quote that um, that's something that uh, I wish I was a free soul and I wish I was surrounded by free souls you know that way maybe optimism might have hit me but uh, I'm not an optimist and I wish I was but um, I'm not an optimist but I think that that's another debate you know optimism is something um, you cannot just impose on yourself just like poetry or writing you know you cannot impose it Optis optimism comes with satisfaction you know if you're satisfied you're optimist you're an optimist and you're positive you have all this positive energy that mostly happens when you have everything that you want you have attained everything but you know a human is a human is never satisfied with whatever he has attained you know whatever the destination he might have had reached so it's just that um if you're a free soul you're free in every fucking phase of your life you know it's just not that you are free after reaching after attaining to sir after having multiple degrees and multiple you know working in a very good company or something like that you know having having a very luxurious life so free soul is free despite of any age despite of any times you know whether whether they're doing going through any calamity or anything that they're free because they do not worry they are just they're not optimist they're not pessimist they are just free so optimism and pessimism doesn't involve a free soul free soul is just free so yeah that was one hell of a discussion okay another quote that says that genius might be the ability to say a profound thing in a simple way that's what i'm talking about that's what i'm talking about when i said that you cannot you shouldn't use a uh, heavy vocabulary in your writing that's what i'm talking about about because again you cannot just use heavy words and you expect your readers to be you know understand you you know it's very hard i i if i'm a writer i'm a reader as well i'm a writer as well but my vocabulary it does suck it's just it's it's very bad my vocabulary is very bad but i just try to keep on improving it i it, i just take it very slow you know step by step where I can just, where I just feel like, like this word, it's better if it's just taken this way. This synonym, this is ours. If this word, this is ours, goes with my, with the what I want in this writing, then I just go for it. So it's just that. It's uh, very much like that. So it's just that genius might be the ability to say a profound thing in a simple way. I just, I, I'm not, I'm not even there. I'm not even there. That's something I do not do. I'm not a genius. I'm not a fucking genius, but I want to be a genius, uh, you know, to say a profound thing, you know, in a way that that's understandable to every other person out there. And that's what I ex expect from most of the writers. And that's what, that's how Charles Bukowski is. And that's why I'm a big fan of him. So, yeah. Um, people were usually much better in their letters than in reality. They were much like poets in this way. What does this mean? It means that it means that if you mean if you meet certain people, you know, if if you haven't met me, I'm a writer, right? If you if you haven't met me, you would know me, what kind of person I am. But you have met me through my writings. You have met me, you have known me through my writings. Um so yeah, if there is always two t two perceptions of a person, you know, when you meet them personally and when you meet them through their writings, through their words. And the words, those exchange of words are not through their, you know, uh, visually, you know, you do not speak to them directly. You just, you know, you do not confront them directly. You just read to them. So that is something that there, they, these two things built two different perceptions of a person. So, uh, what this means is that if you meet if you if you read people in letters you know they're much they have much depthness and they have much uh, you know poetic way of writing um as compared to their very soul that is not so much poetic and uh, that is not um very much like that you no know, you cannot when you see those people you cannot just say that they might have had written those things you know they might have had said those things like me you know people no one my uh people at my house you know my own family doesn't believe that i have said certain things 
you know they do not believe me because you know my personality i think that it's just maybe in front of them it's not like that so yeah it's just that um poetry poetry is what happens and nothing else can i'm just gonna end my podcast on this one piece uh not one piece one quote that is that was written by charles Bukowski and um so yeah poetry is what happens when nothing else can so i think that poetry has been happening for me for some time i guess for for some time yeah it has been happening for me but let's see how long this is gonna work for me as long as uh i keep on just you know doing it for the sake of my heart so yeah i'm just just gonna follow my heart and just gonna follow whatever goes inside it you know whatever the shit goes inside me i'm just gonna just write so yeah that was a that was uh the podcast um that was brought to you by my mahan and um so yeah i hope you enjoyed and I, I hope you enjoy listening to my rants my boring rants i just try to be as much entertaining as i could but i'm not a good very good entertainer i warned you all before so yeah so this was it uh this is umayma khan signing off take care bye bye